think I'm recording. Hang on. Um, hey, there she is. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to EYB Promotional Consultants Marketing Lab. This is our first session, so we might have a few technical difficulties, but hopefully not that many um, as we get rolling here. Um, we would like to try to make this as informative as possible, so we've muted everybody when they come into the meeting. Feel free to ask questions in the chat, and they will be answered at the end. My guest today is Keith Opp, who is currently the digital director at Gannett and the founder of Next next success consulting keith has had over 30 years of business ownership national sales and marketing leadership and over his career he has owned his own restaurant ran a marketing team with the top 100 company in the u.s led a national sales team from the startup phase to over 450 employees working with over 19,000 restaurants he has over 25 years of digital marketing experience and after 30 years of experience, he has founded Next Success Consulting, where he has assisted CEOs and presidents with mergers and acquisitions, sales, marketing, and recruiting efforts. Welcome, Keith. Well, thank you, Scott. And um, probably one line versus uh, 30 lines of my background. Thank you for making me <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm about 90 right now. Well, I feel like for as long as you and I have known each other, I feel like I've gone, I've been with you and known you for a good portion of that as we're coming upon 20 years of uh, what started out as boss and, and employee and, and got into a, a great friendship. So I appreciate you joining us today Thank on you. this first session. And I think that um, the people that are listening today and the people that are gonna be listening to this, these, these sessions are really gonna enjoy it. And I think you're gonna be able to provide them some great, um, some great insight as to how they can really um, really grow their business in this, you know, this stressful time during this crisis. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of jump in a little bit about your background. Uh, so people know a little bit more about you, where you, you know, where you came from and kind of how you got to the position you are. Um, so I guess first tell us maybe where, where you live, where you reside in the, United, in the U.S. Well, for the first time in probably my career, I'm actually residing here in Rochester, New York for uh, 25, almost 30 years. I lived out of a suitcase uh, traveling the U.S. Uh, four or five days a week. Um, I was in a different city every single day for almost 25 years. So um, now today it's, it's nice to be able to look out the windows and actually see the same landscape two days in a row. <laughs> that's right. You did travel all over the place, that, that's for sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your first job in marketing that you had, where it was, what you did, the role, Absolutely. things like that. So I started out in the food service industry. Um, you know, Scott talked about the fact that I owned a restaurant. I worked for uh, Cisco Foods, a food distributor who is now a $38, $40 billion company. Um, I started with them in 1986. Now, if anybody knows the history of Cisco, they started in 1979. So literally seven years after they originated. Um, moved up through the sales ranks, um, did quite well there, um, then was actually promoted into the director of purchasing and then later into my first job with marketing in 1995 as the director of marketing for Cisco. And then uh, shortly after that, within a year, promoted to the VP of marketing uh, with Cisco. Gotcha. Um, and how long were you at Cisco total? Uh, 14 years with Cisco, five of that of which uh, was in the, the marketing role. So 95 through 2000. Gotcha. And you started off just on the street, right? Selling, selling food, right? 100%. Just uh, hustling up and down the highway and uh, meeting with restaurateurs and uh, manufacturing firms and hospital healthcare facilities and, and selling uh, food, food and products related to that. Correct. Revolution Scott. Gotcha. Now that was before. Was that before? Yep. Oh, hold on. Sounds That's like weird. You're some internet service problems. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Um, so did you work at Cisco before or after you owned the restaurant? It actually, actually was um, in the midst of it. So 85 through 
88, I work for Cisco as a street salesperson. Then one of my biggest clients was going to grow in his business and move from the restaurant that he had, which was a very small restaurant, into a much larger fine dining restaurant. And he wanted a partner. And being the entrepreneur that I was, I jumped on it and owned a restaurant for the next four years of my career. So. Gotcha. So you're doing both. You were working at Cisco and had the restaurant at the same time. So I was working for Cisco, left and went to um, and bought the restaurant. Did that for three and a half years. And then the EVP for the division that I had worked for was transferred to another division as president. And he had picked up the phone and called me and asked me if I would follow suit with him to the new location that he was at as the head of uh, purchasing for that division. So at that point in time, towards the tail end, I owned both the restaurant and was working at Cisco at the same time. Gotcha. Yeah, that seems to be low. I'm sure that was a stressful time. That's yeah, sure. yeah. My wife, thank God, that we didn't get um, at the time, so we survived. So. What's one? Keep losing you there, Scott. I'll, I'll, I'll take it from here. What was uh, one thing that I learned at the job that carried me throughout my <laughs> career? Director. Um... Yep. We keep losing you there, Scott. Um, I would say the one thing that I've learned in terms of over my career, and especially as it relates to marketing, is that we all have to understand that fundamentally it comes down to one person to whom we're communicating with. We may have hundreds of thousands of clients, we may have thousands of clients, hundreds of clients, but when we're talking about marketing, it's a one-to-one -one <coughs> communication with the individual. So, what that means essentially is you have to separate yourself from your competitors in what makes you unique. And I'll, I'll talk about the fact of this job and a job that I had after that. If I would ask a restaurateur, tell me what makes you unique, they would say great food and great service. Well, does that mean that every other restaurant has poor service and poor food? Probably not. But so what I talk about is when you're when you're creating that point of differentiation, what makes you different in the eyes of your audience? You know, in, in terms of Cisco and in that role of marketing, I looked at how we approached our business from trade shows to communications and all those things. And I completely revamped our trade shows. So traditional food service trade shows, you'd walk in, you'd walk down an aisle, you see all these chafing dishes and people standing behind the booths and they would say, come over and test my chicken wings or test my French fries or green beans or carrots, whatever. To me, that was vanilla. It was boring. So I changed our trade shows so they were culinary shows. So then when you came in, you had culinary chefs taking these items, preparing dishes with them, having recipe cards at the tables, so now not only did you see the carrots or the green beans or the chicken wings, you saw those prepared in a dish that would be presented out to a consumer when they walked into your restaurant. Total different approach. And because I looked at it as a restaurant tour doesn't need to know about carrots. They don't need to know about green beans. They know what they are. But tell me how I can use that. Take it to the next level. And so we, we created one-to-one -one marketing of being able to say to our clients, this is what makes us unique. It's not that we have carrots or green beans, is we know how to create great recipes and that's what made us unique. Our typical trade shows prior to my coming on board would do $2 million in a day. When I finished at the end of a two year period, we were doing $10 million out of a trade show in a single day. So a 500%, you know, five times, five X increase in the number of, uh, sales coming out of a show. So it was out of the box thinking that you were kind of brought to that very traditional type of show. And that's kind of something that you've done throughout your career, whether it's sales or marketing or management or consulting, correct? That's 100% correct. It's, you got to be fresh. You got to separate yourself from the competitors. You can't just continue to keep doing what they're doing and expect that you're going to differentiate or grow your business. It's not going to happen. So from there, um, talking about a completely one, uh, 180 degree turn from working in a traditional company like Cisco, right? You 
took a job with restaurant.com. Tell us a little bit about that experience and how it kind of shaped you to the next phase in your career. So very interesting in the fact that you come from a company that is well-established, Cisco Foods, nationally recognized. Um, I've got a father who was the head of research for IBM, um, you know, spent 30 years of his career with IBM. And here's his son who's talking about going to this startup and giving up all of this, you know, security with Cisco and, you know, stock options and all this wonderful stuff. And I jump into this startup called restaurant.com in 2000. Zero employees, zero clients, zero revenue stream. And there was five of us sitting down to the table to talk about this concept of restaurant.com. And where were, where were we going to take this? And at the time, if you go back to 2000, probably one in 20, one in 30 restaurants even had a website. And now we're talking about creating this, this company to really promote restaurants anywhere across the U.S., a, a centralized place that you could go to online and identify with the restaurants by cuisine, um, by price points, all those type of things. So it was a, a quite the big jump in my uh, career in taking on a role of VP with that company. Right. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of out-of-the-box things you had to try. You know, you had to figure out how to recruit differently. You figure out how to touch customers differently, how to manage differently than because these were things that had never been done before in an organization that was from the ground up. And I think some of the people that are going to be on and listen to our, you know, to this, this session are in that role, you know, like maybe they came from a different industry and then they decided to start their own business, whether it's their own restaurant, their own roofing company, their own law firm, whatever it is, they had to kind of think about it out of the box of like, okay, well, this is what I did before when I worked for this other company and how can I do things a little bit different now that I'm, you know, I'm self-employed, all right, or I'm a sole proprietor or I have, you know, 30 employees. How am I going to do that? And especially now with what we're sitting at and dealing with this pandemic, um, that's what we're going to kind of go into. One more question about you and your background before we kind of get into those questions. So throughout your career, you've obviously worked for small companies. You've worked for Fortune 100 companies. When it comes to marketing, what type of similarities do you find in both types of organizations? I think the easiest answer to this is the fact that with marketing, you cannot have complacency. You always have to be creating that fresh new look to your image or how you share your story. If you're just putting out and I, and I think about this from the, today now that I work with Gannett Media, and I look at some of the team members who will put an ad out there for a client and let that same ad run for two or three months. And then I look at the, the stats around that, that ad and the first month, you know, it's off the charts in terms of engagement levels. And by month two, it drops off. And by month three, it's non-existent. One of the things you have to be very, you know, cognizant of, you know, when you're talking about marketing is keep it fresh. Every single month, you should have a different message, a different story going out to your clients. Whether you're talking about new services you're offering in your business, hours of operation, your philosophy of business, you always need to have something fresh and unique out there. Change the background image. Don't just, don't use your logo as your, your brand recognition. You know, photographs and images, keep it always fresh and, and new. It doesn't matter the size of the company. Those are things that go across any type of business. Universally, it doesn't matter. It's just you cannot live in a world of stagnation. You have to keep your image fresh. Well, that's great. And, you know, obviously your background is, is very diverse, which is definitely, you know, helpful to everybody. Um, so obviously today we're sitting in the middle of a global pandemic, something that the world has never, hasn't seen like in over a hundred years, if not more. Um, so, but businesses are still open. You know, it, you know, not every business is open right now, but there are businesses that are open and there are businesses that are businesses that are just closed temporarily. Um, and what we want to talk about, you know, for the next, you know, 20, 15, 20 to 25 minutes is to kind of talk about ways that businesses right now can, and you, from your perspective and, you know, your experience and, you know, working with what you do at, at Gannett on the digital side, what are some ways that businesses should be connecting to their customers and getting a perspective, um, what, and their customers and prospective customers during this crisis. 
great, great question. And it's probably one of the, the pinnacle points for me in terms of when I look at businesses and how they're conducting themselves or how they're carrying themselves forward in this, in this crisis, one of the biggest mistakes that I see businesses making today is that they are not staying online and staying up to date with how their business behavior. So have they updated their website with their hours of operation, their pandemic protocols? Have they done that across social media platforms as well? Have they updated their information on their Google My Business page? It is the biggest miss that I see across all of the businesses today. The other day I went on, and just call me stupid, but this is what I do for fun, I guess sometimes. I looked at 45 different businesses across different business verticals, and I went and looked at their website, their social media page, and their Google My Business page. 40 out of 45 businesses did not have their protocols, hours of operation, updates to what they're doing out there today. The ones that were smart, those five that I looked at, one of them was a, a plumber who talked about the fact that when his team pulls into your driveway, they will text the customer to alert them that they have arrived on site. If there are any individuals within your home that are at risk or we should be made aware of, please let our drivers know so that we can you know, maintain their safety and your safety while we're servicing your property. Great way to update it. We have restaurants that traditionally have been fine dining restaurants who have never offered to go meals or curbside who are now offering curbside pickup, right? They're putting it on their website of what services and how that works. So one restaurant, for example, when you pull into their parking lot, you will be met by one of their servers who will have a telephone number. You call that telephone number, you place your order, right? You tell them what vehicle you are and you go and you pull into the parking lot. Another server will bring your meal out within minutes. So these are the type of things that as a business today, you can't sit here and just, you know, wait for this pandemic to end. You have to make some very strategic decisions on how you're going to behave, how you're going to run your business in these times. Because we don't know if this is going to be a 30-day problem or a 60-day problem. So you can't just sit back and wait while your cash flow just diminishes to non-existent. The um, so those are all things that the people, if they have those things set up, right? If you, I mean, I would say a majority of businesses right now do have a website, but if they don't have a website, can you update those things on social media? Um, like, are those things that they can update themselves or do they need someone like yourself or someone from like a team like yours to do that? No, I, I mean, most, most restaurants, most businesses across the U.S. will have a social media business page or they should have a social media business page which means they've got their own logins to be able to go in there and update it just like you would do on your own personal social media page you know not a lot of differences in there your google my business page you should have controls over that so if you are a business go in and make sure you've got your login credentials for your google my business page and please update that information immediately i would say as soon as we get off the phone that should be your number one priority because when someone's online and they're searching around your business content, those services that you provide, the first thing that's gonna populate on the right-hand side is your Google My Business page. And there's your website, there's your hours of operation, there's links, you know, all the, the most important pieces of information that someone needs to know about you. So that is probably the single location that I would say needs to be the most relevant immediately. Then secondary, your website, and then third, your social media page. So those are ways that people that are already connected to you, your current customers probably. What about prospective customers using those same type of uh, you know, marketing tools? So like, is there a way to do that in, from your perspective? Well, I, I would say this. Um, if we still want to constantly engaging and, and bringing on new customers, right? I, any business should be growing their, their business, um, you know, their connections. One of the challenges we see when there's a pandemic or a recession or things of that nature is that a lot of individuals just by pure human nature will pull back in. They'll start conserving on their expenses. They'll start conserving on how they approach their business. We see layoffs that happen out of this or furloughs that happen out of this. 
And if we go back in history and we look at companies like Kellogg's cereal versus Post cereal, and we go back into the recession of 1929 and Kellogg's and Post competing against each other, very equal in size at that time, and we go into this recession, Post cereal takes the, the human approach and they pull back on their expenses, they pull back on their marketing efforts, they're laying off staff, and tell, Kellogg's takes a completely different approach and they continue to keep marketing as they had post or prior to the recession. And what ends up happening? Fast forward four years later, Kellogg's at the time becomes three to four times the size of Post Cereal. Hmm. And here we are 90 years later, plus 90 plus years later, and Kellogg's is still dominating the cereal market over Post. Because Kellogg's took the position that we're not pulling back. We're going to continue to keep doing the marketing because we need to continue to engage with customers. And they accelerated coming out of the recession where Post Serial had to play catch up and they've never caught up since. Well, that takes us to, a, to the next question, which actually I think is really pertinent about that. So now you're a mm -hmm. business owner, you know, you might have had to furlough some staff or your business kind of slowed down, has to change right now. You know, we all have probably some extra time on our hands that we didn't have before, right? So what does it mean to do a marketing checkup? And why is it important to do at this time? Like what should an owner be doing almost like a step-by-step? -step? I mean, go back to when you hired a new sales rep and they had no idea what they should be doing day to day, right? They were given a, a to-do list. These are the things that you should be doing day to day. What kind of a checkup or a, a checklist should um, these business owners have that they should make sure that they're doing in order to, to stay in front of customers and, and prospects? Okay, I'll, I'll go through a couple things. We've already talked about the fact that, that your website, your social media, and your Google My Business page should be updated with your latest um, business activity. You know, what are your hours of operation? What services are you providing, you know, during the crisis that's different than what you've done prior to the crisis? We've talked about that. One of the other things that I would say to every business is that you should have Google Analytics set up on your website. Google Analytics, which is free service, Google provides it. Go to googleanalytics.com and, and just go through the steps to get it set up. Well, what that allows you to do is that you can begin to look at who is visiting my website. Let's not assume who's visiting my website. Let's go with factual data. Who's visiting my website? Where are they coming in from geographically? What does their age look like? You know, um, what pages on my website are they reading? What's most important in terms of information that they're looking or they're seeking from my business? So I, I cannot stress enough that Google Analytics is a critical piece to understanding where we go from here today and where we're going forward. Data can drive good, solid business decisions, all right? And Google Analytics provides a lot of that foundation for the data, that's one. As part of Gannett, we have a tool called Local IQ Grader. And what that tool allows us to be able to do is very similar to what the question asked here is, it's kind of a healthcare checkup. How is a business, does my business compare to my closest competitors? What are they doing versus what am I doing online? What should I be doing versus what they're doing? And so the local IQ grader has become a very instrumental tool for me to sit down with a client and have some very intelligent conversation around, you know, what does your audience look like? How many people are within your, your geographic area that you're reaching? For example, yesterday I talked to a plumber. How many homes are geographically within the area that you're, you're trying to target, right? And you're trying to engage with those homes and so are three to five or seven other competitors. So what are you doing different than what your competitors are doing? And this IQ grader tells them, you know, do they, are they doing social advertising? Are they doing search, SEM, SEO, you know, what are they doing in terms of their online presence different than you? And the great storyline yesterday was that this plumber has 128 likes on his social media page, 
one of his closest competitors has 13,000 likes. Hmm. So complacency, you know, his competitor is accelerating in their marketing efforts at a time where he was thinking of pulling back. Interesting. So I, the way I, if I'm understanding it correctly, some of these things you can do on your own, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if you're handy and you can finish your basement on your own, hey, go for it. But if you need the help of a professional that can do more details into it and they, they really can, can take you through the, every single step, that's where you guys might come in if that customer chooses to do that. Is that what that's, I'm hearing correctly? That's right. You know, it's a smart business owner or, uh, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, I talked to CEOs and presidents, you know, they're intelligent, okay? But they're only intelligent to a certain degree. So what they do is they surround themselves with some very intelligent individuals to round out their business, right? So I may be a lawyer and I may know the law frontwards, backwards, you know, great, but I'm not a great marketer. That's fine. That's okay. Connect yourself with a marketer. Let them do what they do best and you take care of what you do best. Because if they do their job well, you're going to be extremely busy. That's exactly right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think that, um, you know, I, there are so many people that I think are at a loss of what they need to be doing right now. Like some people are just frozen in panic of like, oh my gosh, now they just found out today that all the schools in their area are going to be closed for the rest of the year. Okay, well, what if you deal with, what if you deal with children? What if you run a business that does um, classes for kids? but you can't have them come in there. So there are definitely ways that they, that business could reach out to those potential families and say, hey, listen, we can still do things, but they need to be able to get in front of those families, right? So I think that there's a, definitely a way to use digital marketing to draw people in. Um, and like you said, you, know, you have to do that checklist of the things that they're currently doing and the things that they could be doing. Does that, does that sound accurate? It is, and, and I guess I'll say one more point on there is that how many on this phone or on this call today, when your car needs an oil change, you go to a guy that changes the oil on it in a second. You wouldn't even think twice about that. But when it comes to marketing your business, which could drive the highest revenue, there are too many individuals out there that think I can do self-service. And that's not what they do every day. That's not their area of expertise. They're not, they're not exposed to all the different things that are out there every single day and different ways that people are approaching their business. Whereas individuals like myself, that's what we do every day. We're on conference calls every day talking about some of the best campaigns that were run out there and what was the approach and what solutions were used in that campaign so that when we sit down with a client and talk about their specific business vertical, we can bring to the table the right solution, the right mix, the right messaging to get the highest level of engagement. So rather than go through this trial and error period, why not go to the expert who does it every single day and eliminate that, you know, that trial and error and uh, lost time and revenue potential for your business. And I think you're going to find, everybody's going to find that the professionals that we have coming on doing these sessions are all very similar to Keith. You know, they, they have an expertise that, you know, yes, you might be able to go out and figure it out on your own, but again, trying to provide some insight as to how to take it to the next level, especially during this time of uncertainty, you know, and that's the goal is we want people to, to realize that this is not going to last forever. The way you might've done business four months ago might not be the same way that you're going to do it six months from now. Right. So we're hoping to be able to share insight as a way to help you not be as panicked and to realize that, okay, today I need to do this, 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 and this to make sure that I'm going to be here in six months. So it's um, a very valid point here. You talk about the fact that, you know, how we operated in the past, how we operate within the crisis, and then how do we operate our business post-crisis? It's really important to think about that for a second to everybody on this phone, because post-pandemic, what will be the new norm? If we think the norm is what it was prior to the pandemic, then I think we're all being foolish and I think we're being short-sighted. Post-pandemic, at least for the first six months plus, is as a restaurateur, are you moving your tables a little further apart from each other?
being sensitive to the fact that people are now transitioning back into your restaurants into a business busy environment and they're still a little hesitant as a retailer are you still maintaining some conversation around you know that six foot barrier because if you expect that you know the day they open up the doors we're all going to go back to normal i don't think that we're being smart about that you know you might have some of the younger generation that might go back but some of the older generation is going to be a little bit hesitant so my challenge to everybody also is what are you doing now but what is your plan as we come into post pandemic how are you going to op operate your business knowing what people have gone through the last you know 30 60 days absolutely and it's just kind of things to think about i mean as you were as you were saying that if you own a retail staff, if you own a retail business, right? So maybe like, for example, I went into a local grocery store the other day and they were only allowing so many people in at a time. So it's interesting that maybe four months from now, businesses that are still super busy might still have that in place, right? That they only are allowing so many people to come in at a time, right? Maybe if you own a local movie theater, right? There's a local movie theater up the street or even a large movie theater. Like instead of filling every single seat, they have two to three seats in between. So from your perspective and a marketing standpoint, maybe there should be something that they post on social media that they have on their website, that they have posted somewhere that these are gonna be our new procedures going forward. And then to put it out there for people in an email campaign or put it out there in a text campaign or whatever it is to let people know that these are the things that we are thinking about to make sure you, our customers, uh, number one, are aware of, but are also comfortable to come back in and, and um, support us and, and, you know, and, and shop with us. Well, and it, it, and it doesn't have to be the, you know, to the degree of far right, far left. If I'm a movie theater, maybe one of my theater operations allows full capacity because and everyone's okay with that. But I, then I offer the service that we'll have a secondary movie theater that will stagger seating every other row. Or if I'm a restaurant, I might have one dining room that I allow to go to full capacity. But if you do have concerns, we have a secondary dining room where the tables are spaced further apart. So you're giving them an option to choose which of those two places they want to be. It's a transition. Uh, like the old have. smoking and non-smoking. Yeah, I remember back the days, right? Yeah. Right. Nobody, if you would have thought years ago if if restaurants or bars would, would go non-smoking and then they had the smoking section and now it's not even an option, right? In, in a lot of states. Yeah, so, so great, great example. It's a perfect example yeah. we've had to do, right? So, um, so again, I don't know if this is the similar question or something we've kind of talked about. Uh, if there's anything new, how would you suggest a market strategy for the next 30 days? So that's similar to what kind of what we talked about, but um, is there anything that, let's say that someone, um, most people would I'd say have a website, right? Mm -hmm. So what are other things that they can do to try to, and just in the next 30 days, besides just putting it on their website that says this is our protocol, anything else? Yeah, so I think this is a great question because if you really go back to what I was talking about with Kellogg's and Post, you got to think that some of your competitors right now are playing the post side of the biz, right? They're, they're pulling back. They're being conservative. They're not spending as much. You know, they're canceling their marketing programs right now. If you really want to accelerate, put some money into marketing right now. And here's a great, here's a great reason why. I just did a, a call this morning at 830 with a group, and we were talking about national news sites. And realize that national news sites, their, um, their audience is up 300%. And here's why, is that people are hearing national news stories that are going on out there around the pandemic. And what they do is they go to their local news sites and their news media, and they validate, is what I'm hearing on a national level reflecting here in my local community? You know, is what's happening in New York City? Are we seeing those same kind of numbers and growth of deaths and things that are happening out there? Am I seeing that on my, on my local level? And so they're going to the news sites and these news sites now are up 300% in audience traffic. So as a business, what does that mean? It means that if, you know, if I went back three months ago and I spent a dollar to reach a thousand people, 
that same dollar that I spend today with that new site is going to get me 300 people, 300 eyes in front of me because I got a 300% increase in the number of people visiting websites. So as a business today, doing things like display advertisements, you know, which goes on those new sites, you're getting 300% better attention or 300 times the eyes that you were getting even a couple months ago. Right. Interesting. And uh, there's all different ways to be able to do that. There's digital, there's video, there's promotional products, there's radio, there's a variety of types of things. And again, that's where the, the checklist comes in to say, okay, what was I spending money on six months ago? I understand I might not be having as much revenue come in, but again, you don't want to be left behind like post was versus Kellogg. So I think that's a very interesting thing to, um, to take a look at. And it's something that people should really keep in mind. That's a great article. Um, and I think, I don't know exactly where it was from that post um, Kellogg's article. I, I have to, you, you I have to look it up. Maybe we can put it on our social media. Today's world. Remember when we were growing up and you would tell, you'd ask your parents something, they'd say, go look it up in the dictionary. And today they just yeah. Google it, right? <laughs> right. It's, you know, so, right. Or go to the encyclopedia. Yeah. Go to the encyclopedia, look it up. Yeah, Post versus uh, Kellogg's, you can look it up online. Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, all right, so the last question that I have for you before hopefully we have some questions from um, participants in the audience. Um, if you could go into the future and come back and tell every one of us one thing you learned about after this. Looks like you're having uh, internet connectivity issues here again. Um, there are really two things that come out of this. One of the biggest things that we're seeing, and this goes across, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a restaurant or retailer, is e-commerce. How many businesses were caught, and it's proverbially with their, their shorts down, because they didn't have an e-commerce solution set up. And we look at businesses today that are scrambling to try to figure out how to take their inventory and put it online so that the consumer can buy that inventory even though they can't allow people through the front door of their businesses so e-commerce is exploding right now so if you're a business and you don't have an e-commerce solution and you have product on the shelf i would tell you that's one of the things that you need to be looking at immediately all right post pandemic pandemic whatever happens in the future you always need to have a plan A and a plan B and how you approach your business so that you can continue to keep revenue coming in the door. That's one. Um, and I had a secondary to that. And, <laughs> oh, secondary to that is promotions. So there's a company out of um, St. Louis, Missouri called um, Second Street Promotions. And what we're seeing right now, and you gotta think about this, there are so many more people online, they're sitting at home, they're bored, and they're looking for different things to do. And smart businesses today are running these promotions. It allows people to enter into these, these promotions and win a grand prize, all right? And let's just take a car wash here locally. You get a three month package of unlimited car washes over the next three months. That's the grand prize. Everybody else that enters gets what we call a kickback coupon of a free car wash. In two weeks, they have 980 emails of people participating in their promotion. These are individuals now that have given permission to this car wash to be able to reach out to them for future promotions and engagement. So smart businesses today are building out substantial databases of emails so that when pandemics or crisis or things of that nature happen, they have a list of people that they can engage with regardless of what else is going on out there. So creating databases of emails, running promotions to create that level of engagement, which really helps to drive your brand is huge right now. And one of the things that I would put at the top of the list. So I'll add two things to that, that I, that, that's a great answer. The first one was um, for online. Most people probably think of like e-commerce, first of all, nowadays is probably online ordering for a restaurant, right? But let's say, for example, you are a plumber and you have supplies in your warehouse, 
right? If something breaks in somebody's house that they need, well, maybe instead of them going to Amazon, they go onto your website since you're the plumber, you can set up a digital chat on your website that could be free if you set it up a specific, with a specific company, certain companies offer you a free chat. You can do that. You could ship the customer that piece from your warehouse and they could potentially order it online, pay for it with a credit card. You don't have to worry about anything. So that's just a way for someone that is in a business that you wouldn't normally think would do e-commerce could do that. The second one is if you're a restaurant and you want people to do other things in addition to buy gift cards and order takeout, let's say that they have, and this is maybe a little plug for EYB, but if you have a really cool brand, you could set up an online store, right? And it could be someone that just has a cool logo in itself. I have one customer, we have one customer that is a refrigeration company, right? And he has designed a completely new brand of a brand new logo that he wants to start selling his own gear, right? This would be a perfect opportunity for him to put that out there for people to buy and support his business during this time. So those are two things. Um, the third thing that you had mentioned was, um, oh my gosh, now I'm having to, my, my brain froze. The you second thing, blame you, it on thing because, you know, the first thing you said was e-commerce. And the second thing you said was, um, promotion, promotion, promotion. Right. So, so let's say, for example, everybody, uh, can buy something when they buy things, um, maybe they get something that they can not only use in the future, two, three, four months down the road, but maybe it's something that they can use while they're home with their family, right? Maybe it's a custom board game. Maybe it's a stress ball. Maybe it's something that would have that company's logo in it. So it actually stays in that customer's house. So they're seeing it all the time. So it has that customer's name on it um, and helps both ways. So they're getting business by buying that product or the service and going to be able to use it at a future date. Love the car wash idea. And then something that's going to stay there. Maybe they have a sponge or something, their big bucket that they can use to wash their own car when the car wash isn't open. So I think that those are both great ideas um, to be able to see how business is going to change and has changed. Because I do think that e-commerce and promotions in different ways are going to affect us in the future. 100%. Um, so I wanted to see if we had any questions from the audience. Let me see if I can open up the chat real fast. Let me see here. Uh, chat. Okay. If we have any questions from the audience, everybody, if you're on, if you want to throw questions out there, um, uh, we'll keep it open for a, for another couple of minutes. We've been on for a little less than 50 minutes. Um, so the, just kind of waiting to see if anybody has any, let's see here. I will throw it out there. If you have questions, you know, you want to take offline that are unique to your business in, in terms of um, digital marketing and, and strategies around that, you can certainly reach out to me. Um, my email address that I use for business is k o p p at gatehouse media dot com and i'm not looking here to sell you anything but if you certainly have some questions i want to be able to provide that advice that consultation for you uh, free of charge excellent well keith i really appreciate your feedback and again um and your participation today hopefully everybody thought that this was a that was valuable we're going to be sending out um, we're gonna be sending out a survey at the end of this session. It's gonna be emailed to you. And we're having a session again next week. Uh, we're gonna be promoting out there um, a woman that works for Beasley Media Group. Um, she'll be talking about radio banner ads, things like that as well. Uh, but her insight goes across the marketing boards as well. So we'll make sure that we post all the information out there. And uh, Keith, again, thank you so much for your time. And um, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much everybody for attending. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everyone.